everyone, and welcome to the Torch Snuffers After Show. My name is Elise Anderson, and today we're going to be breaking down what went wrong for the fifth contestant eliminated from Survivor Game Changers. Joining me tonight, we have Torch Snuffers panelist, Stephen Lehman. Stephen, how are you? I'm doing great, Elise. Thank you. Perfect. And we also have our special guest for the week, Tommy. Tommy, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for asking. Very welcome. Oh, it's going to be a super polite podcast this week. Anyway, so spoiler alert, tonight we're going to be talking all about JT Thomas, the winner of Survivor Token Chains. He also played in uh, Survivor Heroes vs. Villains with Sandra. And now we see him pre-merged boot of Survivor Game Changers. So I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about uh, JT's game in Survivor Token Chains. Now, Token Chains was the very first season I watched, so that was my introduction to Survivor, and I thought the way you win is by being super nice, and everyone will just like you and let you get to the end, and it's going to be great. Um, that's basically what JT did. He worked really well with uh, his friend, Steven, who, and they got to the end by basically crushing <laughs> the other tribe of Coach and Debbie and Tyson because they were all in love with JT and they just kind of sacrificed their games to him. Now, uh, Steven, I'll start with you. What was your impression of JT in his first season? Did you like his win? Did you think he played well? Oh, yeah. I, I'm always of the mindset that the winner deserves to win regardless of who it is. So um, I definitely think he deserves his own token chains. Um, yeah, I. I loved JT and Token Chains. I'd say he, I mean, I don't, he wasn't my favorite because I loved Taj and Steven more, but I mean, he was still pretty great, so. Oh yeah, completely. Uh, he pretty much dominated, I think in the beginning of Heroes vs. Villains, Jeff said he played one of the most dominant games of Survivor because he did win unanimously, right. uh, similar to a Tom Westman type, like the new Tom Westman. Tommy, what did you think of JT 1.0 and Token Chains? Um, I liked him. Um, he played a, I think he played a really good game. It was flawless how he got through. I don't think he received a single vote in this season, and he won by a unanimous vote. So, like, to do that, that's, I think that's something to be applauded. And I agree with Steven. Like, a winner deserves their win. No one just wins by accident. Um, but like Steven, I also agree that I much, I think I would have rather Steven or Todd or even, or Aaron win rather than JT because I was a fan of, of all three of the other guys too. Good season overall anyway, like, um, there were a lot of really good characters there, but nothing to take away from JT's win. I think he wholeheartedly deserved it by the way, with how he played it. Well, I think one of the reasons why so many of us are like, I really like JT, but I prefer like a Steven win or a Taj win, is I feel like Taj and Steven did more of the strategizing that season. We didn't really see, J JT did strategize, but he wasn't like a big powerhouse in the way that Steven and Taj were. He wasn't the one forming the Exile Alliance. He was kind of brought into that through his social game. Uh, so, did what did you think steven what did you think jt's main strategy was probably just to you know to make friends with everyone and sort of play up that good old boy role and you know he certainly did that i mean heck that's how he won unanimously mm -hmm. and i believe he actually played a perfect game in the sense that he made it to the end and didn't get a single vote cast against him either so which is really impressive and hardly yeah. ever happens but part of me feels like he came back a few years later for Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. Obviously, from his Token Chains game, he was cast as a hero. But he comes into this game kind of wanting to play hard. He wants to do the super aggressive game, and it ends up biting him because he's trying to make these big moves. He's handing the idol. He famously hands the idol to Russell on the other side and ends up getting blindsided himself because of it. Why do you think he wanted? He went into Heroes vs. Villains being so hyper-aggressive, Tommy? Well, I think what it was, was I think, personally, I think JT is a much better player when it's a season of all newbies, because 
he he can play the good guy role and he can get people on his side. And I think that's the whole reason his game works so well in token teams. Um, because he won the immunities to keep his alliance safe. So no matter how much strategizing Taj or Steven did, it was overshadowed by his wins because it kept them safe. In Heroes versus Villains, what made a big difference is that he aligned with, he, he kept flip-flopping. And yes, flip-flopping in a all returning season might be good because you want to get out the biggest threats, but look who he left with him. Colby, who can't strategize worth shit. Rupert, who can't strategize worth shit. Candace, who flip-flops literally from day to day because there's a different bed. It's And Amanda, who, who is a girl, but she's not here. And, she, and I think JT really needs someone there to strategize for him while he works the social game. That's why it works so well in Token Teens. And he didn't have that in Heroes vs. Villains. So a lot of what he did in Heroes vs. Villains that led to his downfall was because he was so sporadic with what happened and he didn't really consult other people to figure out what was really going on. Yeah, I think you brought up a good point that in Heroes vs. Villains, the heroes pretty much got rid of everyone strategic pre-merge. They got rid of Sari, they got rid of Tom Westman, they got rid of Stephanie, they got rid of all these players that could have helped them with this, I don't know, thinking it through. Like, to think that JT and Amanda were the biggest strategic powerhouses on that tribe come merge kind of indicates why they would go with such a plan, which I think would have worked. If it had worked, if Russell really was on the outs, would have been great, but they were basing it on information that they didn't have. Uh, Steven, do you want to talk about that move in particular? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think JT does get a little too much flack for the idol thing with Russell, because the narrative that the villains were trying to sell with us was that there was an all-women's alliance with Russell and Alex. And I mean, based on the numbers that they had, that's, you know, that's what was, that's what the heroes thought. So JT made a move using the information he had in front of him. Um, obviously, it didn't work out, but I definitely think he, I always think he's gotten too much flack for that. No, I agree. But the other question is, would that move have happened if Steven was in the game for him or someone like Steven? Um, ultimately, I think so, because at this point, it, you know, it's JT's idol that he found. So he probably would have wanted to be the the final say in whether or not, you know, it was transferred or whatever. Yeah. So no. I would say he would want to make that decision decision for himself. I like I, I agree. I think he gets way too much flack for his mishap in Heroes versus Villains. However, I think it caused a lot of people to question whether or not he was as good of a player as they thought he was in Token Sheen. Which brings him to Game Changers. When I first saw JT was in the cast, I was kind of excited because I was like, he could, he's one of the winners. Unlike a Sandra, unlike a Tony, he's a lot more likely to kind of slip under the radar. So I thought he had a good chance, especially if he was working the social game and making people like him. I don't think people would have wanted to vote him out. However, once again, we see him making moves that were kind of unnecessary. Uh, but we'll start with Tommy. What did you think JT had going for him in the beginning of this season? And why do you think he was cast for a game like Game Changers? Well, I think he was cast as a Game Changer because he was he was the first winner to receive no votes against and to win unanimously. Deal, like you've got to be doing something right. In, like to do that and he was a big game changer because he gave away the idol like those are things that like producers that like uh, people want to see on tv um i think in terms of this game what he had going for him was first of all he was on the winning tribe um and even had they lost there was so much going against Suri that wouldn't have been the first person or even the second or even the third person out of his tribe so what happened is the the swap really messed him up and that twist i'm not gonna say like 
it was the reason that he was voted out, but like it's part of it. Like mm-hmm. how he played after played it like a dead man walking. And it all it showed was him talking to Malcolm on what he could do, but he didn't it didn't show him trying to do anything else. And from what that tells me is that through on his tribe, the only person he could get through to was Malcolm. And that speaks volumes to the other four players. But um, I, I think yeah. he was just giving the hand he was dealt. Yeah, so I'm going to back up a little bit. You touched on an interesting point that if they had not swapped, I think JT is probably just surfing to the merge. Uh, we saw him being friends with Ozzy, who seemed to have control of the tribe for the most part, especially over Suri. Um but this swap, he was put in pretty much the worst situation possible, being the only person on a very small tribe from his original tribe. Uh, Stephen, do you think he had a shot, uh, without finding the idol, do you think he would have had a shot to overcome that anyways? Like, d- would the Malcolm thing had have worked out? So, um, you mean if Malcolm had stayed? Yeah, like if, well, let's say the twist never happens, they just go to tribal council, would he still be the person going? I, I don't know, because the problem is, I think the way the dynamics were set up was it was JT, Malcolm, and Aubrey against mm-hmm. Michaela, Varner, and Sandra. And in that scenario, I don't know if people would necessarily want to go to Rocks because okay. there's no revote. Um for someone like JT, who not only is a former winner, but has a bunch of connections on the other side. So I I don't know if he makes it further if the twist doesn't happen, um, but maybe he has more legs to stand on, but I, I still don't think it's a sure thing. So. Yeah, and I think people, like especially a Malcolm or an Aubrey, they're not going to risk going to rocks. They'd just be like, fine get rid of JT, whatever. If they even got that far, I'm guessing they probably wouldn't. I agree with you there. But alas, that's not what happened. Instead, we get hit by this crazy twist, which seems like it would be a benefit to JT because they're going to tribal council with another tribe, which has mostly his former teammates on it. (laughs) However, let's start with this. Tommy, what do you think went wrong? Do you like, what did he, the situation should have been perfect, right? The whole thing was, JT's biggest mistake was he based a move off of information he didn't have, just like he did in Heroes vs. Villains. Yes, it would have been a great move had Sandra been voted out, but he had no information or no proof at all that it's, Mm -hmm. and everything, and like, I didn't think it would be Malcolm, but like everything that showed, like looking back on it, everything that the producer showed, the edit showed toward Sandra. It was like everything that people said, Michaela even said, well, if they had an idol, why wouldn't they just say they had an idol instead of t- Haley telling us who to vote for? The whole thing was caused by JT's t- abrasiveness, I, I guess that would be the word. Like. He's the one that started it. I, I think everything would have been okay had they not. Had he yeah, not. I, I think, I get the feeling that a couple things went wrong with this plan. For Like, if he had managed to vote for Sierra with his tribe, but still get Sandra out, I think it would have been great for him. Suddenly, especially if he, Malcolm, and Aubrey were a thing, they have the numbers. They can easily get rid of Varner and Michaela with no loss to them. However, he's basing, he's basing this move on the idea that the other tribe has an idol. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And then on top of it, if they had the idol, I think the reason why it switched to Malcolm over Sandra is because they had the idol. They could afford to get rid of their biggest threat as opposed to the person JT was most likely to flip on. Uh, Steven, what yeah. did you think of this plan? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, essentially, JT wanted them to take out Sandra. He was like, hey, guys, take out Sandra for me, please and thanks. But for, uh, you know, for New Mana, they were just like, no, we're not playing your game for you. It was sort of like a situation where, 
you know, they could have taken out Sander if they wanted to, but in their eyes, it was probably more optimal to take out Malcolm because, you know, he's a bigger physical powerhouse who weakens not only the original Mana Tribe, but the new Nuku. So you're sort of, and in their mind, they can get rid of Sandra later. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's how she won two times. So maybe she'll do it again. But mm-hmm. yeah, um, I think that was sort of their thought process in getting rid of Malcolm. Yeah, and I think it kind of touches on an interesting point. Like, Tommy, you said, which I agree with, that JT's fatal flaw making these plans without all the information. Like, the plans themselves are fine, but there's no base to them. I also kind of think that JT only sees things from his perspective. He has this tendency, which works in token chains when everyone wants to do things for JT. Right. But in a game like Heroes versus Villains and Game Changers, people are looking out for their best interest. And that's often not what JT, what's the best interest for JT. We see this again right. with this boot episode. So JT essentially goes to Brad tells him that they're voting Sierra and gets his only ally and foothold in this tribe voted out. Right. He's already getting confronted by Sandra, which should have been bad news for him. Though. What's interesting is that he forgets all about the feud because of Sugar. So, and not Sugar the player. I mean, like, the actual feud. <laughs> so, what was JT thinking going after Michaela over Sandra because like he finds, he he knows he's in a corner, he finds the idol and then he goes after Michaela. Why, why Tommy, you tell me. (laughs) Your guess is as good as mine. Um, (laughs) I don't know if this was in his mindset, but I think the logical player to go after in that group of five was Michaela. Because no one was, she wasn't going to find two people to vote Sandra out. It, there was just no way. It's, mm-hmm. I, and I think Michaela was the one person that he could at least sway one vote, and he did. He, he got off, but it just sucks for him because Varner is so far up Sandra's ass. Um, but, but he could have got Sandra out because he had the idol, no? Your but, idea is that he just didn't want to use it? But he didn't bring it to tribal. Yep. It's, yeah. He was, he got so confident that it would be Michaela over Sugar. Completely forgot that he hated Sandra and just assumed that she would vote her, like she would vote <clears throat> Michaela out. I Like it's just, it baffles my mind that you're the reason that their strongest player, their, their strongest physical player is voted out your only ally is voted out because of you and you would be so confident going in three days later that you're not going to be voted out because of sugar like it it baffles my mind that he would think that he wouldn't at least have one or two votes against him and for me if I was him if I had two votes I, I knew I had two votes against me that I don't no matter what like even if there's one vote against me I would still bring that I don't know matter what. I wouldn't be so simple-minded that I would think that everything's just going to go well. Again, I think that brings up the point that JT only sees things through his perspective. He's like, well, I don't like Michaela. Obviously, no one else likes Michaela. This should be an easy vote. Steven, do you think that factored into it, like his overconfidence? Like, <laughs> why did he not bring the idol? I, I honestly don't know. I... I'm really trying to wrap my head around it because there was um, an exit interview that JT did where he was talking about like how we like he, supposedly he actually found the idol not long before tribal. Um, so it was shown early on the episode, but um, yeah. So I, I get, the only thing I can think of is that they really portrayed it so much like Michaela was going that JT somehow believed them to the point where like, he didn't even bring his idol, which to me is perplexing because when you're on a tribe where you're the only one from your original group, that should be enough of a sign in itself that you should bring your idol. But again, maybe JT just didn't read the room right in this instance. 
Uh, well, not maybe. He clearly didn't, obviously, because he got voted out, you know. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know why he didn't, honestly. It... I said this on the podcast that we did uh, this week, that in defense of JT, sure, not bringing your idol is probably a bad idea. But assuming he didn't know that there was a swap coming up this next round, he prob- like maybe he could have been like, oh, well, Michaela's the easy vote. Let's mm-hmm. just take her out without using my idol. And then I'll save my idol for next round when I'm clearly on the chopping block again. But, like, that's a long shot. But maybe, I, have you seen anything in the exit press about this? Or was he just... I, I, you know, I just skimmed over one today. I didn't see anything about that. But I really think he just thought, you know, hey, we're all voting Michaela. That's how it's going to be. And what happened during the episode was I really thought, I really thought that Michaela was being voted out. Yeah. It's like... So much of the edit pointed towards Michaela being voted out right after. Well, I went home from a slingshot last time, so, yeah. hope, so this isn't going to be the time this time. Like that in itself, I'm like, okay, bye, Felicia. Like, <laughs> like during the during tribal, everything just Barner didn't say much. Only Sandra mm-hmm. was talking, so. It pointed towards Michaela going home. It didn't point towards JT going home. So when JT didn't use the idol, I really thought Michaela was going. And then when yeah. JT's third, when the third JT vote came out, I'm like, I gasped and like opened my mouth. But like, to hear that he didn't bring it, like it, especially on a tribe with he's the winner. He's the he's a winner. He's the only one from his original tribe. And there's a two-time winner on that tribe yeah. that has control of the tribe. Why yeah. would you not bring an idol? Just why? Like, At least if you're JT, if you're going to go out pre-merge, similar to Tony, at least it's at the hands of the only two-time winner playing another epic stunt. At, at least you get that <laughs> dignity out of it. So it's unfortunate because I think in the moment as I was watching it, I was like, oh my God, Sandra's amazing. This was great. But then at the same time, you kind of feel bad for JT. Like he tried to make a move. He got overconfident, tried to make a move last episode, ended up getting his only ally voted out. And then finally thinks he has a foothold again, getting rid of Michaela, and then gets voted out with an idol in his pocket. That, that's pretty brutal. Yeah, that's pretty rough. At least he's a winner, so he can go back to his million dollars. <laughs> I think what happened was he lost sight of the game. It's he's going into these games thinking trying to change his way of playing when his way of playing has always been the social game. Right. When your strategic game didn't work, like you couldn't be J- like you cannot be JT, watch heroes versus villains and think everything was going well. Like you have to self reflect <laughs> on what happened. Well, the thing I always was thinking with JT, at least when his return appearance is, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, his his entire way of playing was being social, getting everyone on his side for that reason. And both of these times he's come back, he's sort of, from my perspective anyway, cast that to the side. And he's sort of like, mm-hmm. eh, you know, I'll just try to be strategy, strategy, strategy. And it's like, well, that's not what got you the win. What got you the win was being social and friendly with everyone like where where's that part of you you know yeah oh i agree that he would have done much better in both heroes versus villains and this season if he had just been likable jt especially in uh these kind of all-stars games people are looking for someone they can trust someone who's not overly strategic but would still be willing to do crazy moves with them if it helped them out you know and i don't know if like you think there's an idea we talked about on the podcast that it's not like the game has changed so much that he's trying since season 18 that he's trying to keep up with it but it's not really working out for him uh tell me do you think it's trying to play a new game or is it just his strategy is not working he's not that kind of player i think it's he's i think exactly what we just said like he's trying to change into a game that he can't adapt to when his, like, maybe he won, he won in token teams through a spectacular social game while hiding behind three, two huge strategic threats, Taj and Steven. It's, but 
he won against those guys because he got he knew to get rid of the likable and strategic Taj while keeping only strategic Steven because people would be bitter at him. Like, I don't I don't know why he changed it up in Heroes versus Villains when it works so well in Token Teens. And like and then he's the reason that Malcolm the strategic threat that could have been his shield, like in Token Teens, went home. He's the reason that his shield went home. Mm -hmm. And going through this episode, like, it, I, I just don't really know what to say. <laughs> like, In fairness it, to JT, he's already won his million. Right. So I think on returning seasons, unlike a lot of these people who are trying to prove himself, he can just be like, oh, whatever, I'll just go for it. I'll try yeah. and make good moves and stuff, and then he'll just, but he'll just fail every time. Um, Steven, do you think part of it is JT just wanting to play a more, I don't know, aggressive game? Maybe, but like, yeah, no, I, I, I think you're right, though, in the sense that like he's one of those people who's already won. He doesn't have anything to prove. Um, so, I mean, yeah, so we talked about on the podcast that a lot of people kind of, especially after Heroes vs. Villains, a lot of people thought that that game hurt his previous game, but I don't know if you agree with me, but I don't really think that's the case. No. Steven? No, I, I, I sort of, the way I look at it is each game is a different game, so, like, yeah, he made questionable decisions and game changers, definitely. And he also made questionable decisions in Heroes vs. Villains. But those are different games in Token Genes, you know? The game he won is, you know, just that. It's the game he won. So I don't think these past two, where he hasn't done so hot, I don't think that takes away from his win. We will always have JT, the fabulous winner. Um, the warrior and coaches alliance <laughs> of token teams. I agree with Steven. I don't think it should. These two these two seasons are should or are going to take JT's win like away from him, and it mm -hmm. shouldn't because before he played a spectacular game in token teams. Right. It's against very good against very good players that refuse to come back. Like, no, the only people that's come back from Token Teens is him and Steven, right? And, and, and Coach and Tyson. But like, great, like really awesome players that people love, like Aaron or Todd, or yeah, <laughs> like it's, or Sierra. There's a lot of players in that season that are really great players that won't come back. And, JT beat those really good strategic players. So, like, it's nothing, like, there should be nothing taken away. It's just that the game has evolved so much that he can't play the game that he thinks what Survivor is now. If he comes back one more time, he has to play a game similar to how he played Token Teams. He has to find okay. strategic threats to be his shield while he works the social game and they get blood on their hands, so he gets the votes in the end. And that's why it worked in Token Teens. Oh, I agree. If they come up with an all winner season, the last season of Survivor, if he go, if he learned from two times of playing Heroes vs. Villains and Game Changers, I think he would be a strong contender to win that season. If he just kind of reverts back to being the nice guy it's the slightly strategic nice guy, not the overly strategic nice guy that uh, everyone yeah. voted to win in Token Chain. So if that's everything, uh, it's great episode, you guys. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast. And yeah, check us out at Torch Snuffers on YouTube and Facebook. We'll have another after show next Saturday and a new episode's next Wednesday. Yay. Good night, everyone. Right. Bye. Bye.